Hi, I'm Natalie, and I'm going to show you how to use the So Hungry Hippie Corner and Rivet Template Tool. You can make rounded corners with this template. It has a ruler at the straight edge of the bottom, and it also has these holes so that you can set rivets or Chicago screws or whatever you're using and space them perfectly, whether you're doing double rivets or single. There's two sets of holes here. So I'm going to take you overhead quick and show you a quick tip with these templates. So they are clear and there is etching on here, which will be sort of hard to see on camera. So what I like to do is take a Sharpie and I go over all the grooves with my Sharpie. And if I color out of bounds, I just wipe it away with an alcohol pad. So right here is a two inch curved corner right here. Let me show you, I can just draw a little curvy curve on my thing here. So I use that often when I'm doing curved clutches like along the bottom. This curve is one and a half. See how they differ? This is a tighter, narrower curve. This is a larger curve. If you have my pattern, the no turn curved clutch, you can use that two inch corner if you want to to round the bottom corners if you don't feel like tracing the pattern piece off. You can just measure and then round the corners. So it's pretty cool. Now as for the rivets, I'm gonna take this essentials tote that I've already made and I'm gonna add some rivets. Usually this is my go-to for a grocery bag and so it gets really loaded down. And the handles do go all the way through to the bottom so they're pretty strong. But if you wanted to add any strength, my go-to is just putting in a couple of rivets. So I'll do, I only have my 12 millimeter cap size, which is a pretty big rivet uh, for this bag here at the store. So I'm just gonna probably do one and one, one and one, and then I'll do it for each side. So you can see me doing this in person on a finished bag. Just remember, if your bag is already finished, you will be able to see the rivet caps inside of the bag. That doesn't bother me. I don't really care. But if you don't want to see them, do it to the exterior of the bag before everything is put all together. Okay, I will show you also this uh, really nice, gorgeous Santorini tote that my friend Kim made. And she put rivets all the way down. This is a smaller size rivet. This is an eight millimeter head. So let me take you overhead and I will show you the difference in the cap size. So Kim used eight millimeter rivet heads and this is what I'll be using today, a 12 millimeter. Rivets come in all sizes. We are going to have, uh, I believe, 8, 10, and 12 for sale at So Hungry Hippie very soon once we get them processed. But this is, I like the 12 millimeter style. I just think it's really simple to use and easy to set. But the 8 millimeter is really popular. So since I have Kim's bag here for the moment, let me show you how using the ruler edge can help you set rivets. So she measured this with a traditional ruler and you can absolutely do that. But a lot of times to cheat and save time, I'll set one rivet and then I'll use my ruler and make a little pin dot with a Sharpie every so often. So this one is two inches and three quarters and do a pin dot. And then that one's set. And then I'll go two inches and three quarters, pin dot. And then carry on up, two inches and three quarters. And I mean, that's, that's how I did it when I first started because I didn't know any better and I just made it work. And it, it does work, it can work. But now with this handy dandy tool, it's a little bit easier. What? Uh huh. I think I have a hair. My hair, because my hair is growing, you know, yeah. and it gets in the way and then it gets in my mouth. Okay. Ugh. So on this one, I'm going to use 
the double row. So there's two sets of holes here on one end. I'm going to take you overhead and move this out of the way. Since my bag is already made, I'm going to use this double row. So first of all, I want to get in the center of the strap and that's pre that. Yeah, go ahead. That's pretty easy to find the center of your strap. Uh, but the problem is spacing the two different rivets. So if I'm going to put two rivets in, actually, let me get the caps here because they'll, they will lay flat while I'm talking. If I put one there, I want the other one spaced just right. And with this tool, I can, well, yeah, so this one, you know what I'm going to have to do, because these are really big, I'm going to have to use this kind of like a measuring stick. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to place a hole here. Oh, my Sharpie's too fat. Yeah, I want it about there. So now that hole is there. If I was using eight millimeters, this would be the first one, this would be the second one, and then they're lined up exactly correctly. But I'm not using eight millimeters, so I'm gonna hold my pen here and bring down that first hole and space it one further, you see that? I'm just barely touching that webbing. So now I've got two markings here. Can you see these? Ah, maybe I need to come in with my Sharpie so you can absolutely see them. There's one, there's the other. And they're centered and they're going to be exactly that, they're gonna be exactly the same distance from each other on this strap and then on the other two because I'll, I'll do the exact same system. Now, another thing you can do, is take the two rows and line them up on either side. See this single row now? You can use the single row. Okay, so you could also use this single row to do this. So here's one marking, and then if I go one, two, there's my second marking. And I can do that on this other side as well. Okay, so there's a couple of different ways to do this. The one thing you do want to make sure is use this ruler side, use this ruler side, and make sure that you know where you're starting your first mark, because that will matter a lot on our next strap. So this one is quarter inch, half an inch. It's right in between the half and three quarters inch from this top edge, right in, right in the middle. So let me slide over to the other strap. I'm gonna make sure, here's quarter inch, half inch, now I forgot what I said. Quarter inch, half inch, right in between. Quarter inch, or half an inch, and right here. I have to talk to myself. So I want to start the first rivet there. So this time I'm going to use the single. Do you remember how many dots down we were from over here? One, two, three, four. Four dots down. So I'll make, here's my first dot, one, two, three, four, here's my fourth dot. And I'm going to have to darken those for sure because they're not going to show up there. I always double check these before I make the holes permanent. Let me, where's my single? One, two, three, four, five. 
Yep, it's right. Thank goodness. And you know what? Since we're in the mode of measuring and marking, let's do the other side as well. I'm going to flip it over, and that way they're exactly the same. I'm going to use that single row again, but remember I have to mark where I'm starting. So right in between a half and three quarters. So right there is my start. There's one, one, two, three. Here's the second one. I know you're not going to be able to see that. There we go. Okay, so it's much easier the third time. Just make sure you're centered. And that's another reason that I like the 12, the 12 millimeter cap is because it's very easy to center and it looks good. Even if you're a millimeter off or something, it's easier for your eye to rest on that and it still looks okay. Whereas when you're off center with the eight millimeter heads, it's, oh, you can just tell. So there's our first dot. There's our second dot. Now what am I gonna do? I'm gonna check these before I make holes. And this is what our tool to make the hole looks like. I'll link this in the, in the description. But let me check this real quick. Yep, and I'm gonna place the one, number one circle hole there. Yep, that's correct. I'm going to bring down to this side. I'm going to make sure I started in the right place. Yes. And then I'm going to bring my holes. One. One, two, three, four. Yep, they're in the right spot. So now I know everything is in the right spot and I can punch my holes with confidence. I am using this punch tool and I pick one that's about the same size as the post on my rivets. And I'm gonna go through all layers, right in the center. Sometimes, they do have dies to punch these holes, by the way, and it's worth the investment if you can get one of those. I haven't invested yet, I really should. Okay, there's that. So I can push through the posts now. This is the rivet with the longer post side. I'm gonna push that through. I'm going to check how it looks to my eyes. Looks pretty good. I'm going to put on the caps, but I'm not going to set them yet because I want to have a look. Let me do this side. It still is fixable if you don't have these holes in the right spot yet. All is not lost. So that's why I don't set them till I have a look. All right, let me grab the, the caps with the posts. All right, now I'm gonna go to the other side. So I'm poking the post through and now I'm just placing the cap on. Okay, so the caps are on, but they're not set permanently. So now I'm going to go to the front and I'm going to have a look. I usually like to set it down and I stand back and I make sure it looks okay. I'm not kidding you. This will bug you if you don't set these right. Okay, looks good enough for me. This one is about a millimeter to the left, so I'm going to show you what to do. This one is pulling my eyeball. I can't let it. Let's reset it. Let's go overhead. So all I do is I remove that cap, remove the rivet, and I'm going to come in and punch that hole just a teeny smidge left. And because this is a 12 millimeter cap, guess what? It covers the previous punch hole that I made. So it's totally fine. Nothing is going to show, not on either side. It's covered. Give me two minutes for that. Well, I think I goofed it again. 
It's a little too far left. Look at me. Let's get this right, Natalie. Okay, now we're good. Now we're good. Third time's a charm. You know, sometimes you just do what you have to do. But still, no, nothing is going to show. We're okay. No holes are showing. Everything is covered. Nobody will know it took me three tries. And it's none of their beeswax. <laughs> okay, so now we're going to set these. Let me make sure I have my spectacles on. The cap is set. Both sides caps are on. I'm going to rock it into that cradle so it's nice and secure. Feels good there. And there it is. And it's set. That one is now set. And if you did it wrong, don't panic. Just go watch my rivet remover tutorial because there's a tool that can help you pop these out if you made a mistake. So don't cry. I've already done enough crying in projects for you. Okay, there we go. There they are. See, I don't mind looking at that. And there they are. Let's do the other side. When you put in rivets and you sewed your strap down like this on this essentials tote, these straps are not going to fail on you. <laughs> they are in for life. Unless you, them. Unless you remove them. That's right. All four are in. Let's go to the front view. So those are in, and they're not going anywhere. See that? And they're centered. I have made so many bags where I screwed this part up. And honestly, I felt bad about it, but the bag was still usable, so I didn't feel that bad for long. But I knew that there had to be an easier way, because a lot of times when we're sewing, at least for me, I'm in a rush. I don't have a ton of free time to just mosey about and take take all the time I probably should. I kind of need to get it done, if you know what I mean. What's mosey? Mo you know, this is like a mosey. I'm going to mosey over here and set my rivets. And usually I'm like, i got to set these rivets right now. Let's get done. Let's go make supper. Let's drive over here. Let's open the shop. <laughs> Let's write a pattern. So this will help you. It'll trim your time. You'll find your, your way, your method, just like I have. And it just kind of helps take some of that required thinking out a little bit, you know? It's kind of nice when we can take some of the pressure off. Let's do the other side. Let's set these rivets. And then we'll have a usable grocery bag again. And by the way, this kit is still available. It's the Essentials Tote Kit. And you get everything you need in here. If you want to add rivets, though, you'll have to send me a note because <laughs> I don't have the rivets in there because you don't absolutely need them. All right, I have to stop talking for a minute. I'm kind of getting a talk too much headache. Do you ever get those? Mm. Is that like a brain freeze? It's, well, yeah, it's kind of like, yeah, or maybe I'm just a little bit hot. I don't know. Is that sun? The sun does give me a headache, actually. I like the sun, but I can't, I can't have it in my eyes all day. Remember in San Antonio, I painted, painted a room black <laughs> when we lived there, remember? Oh, yeah. It looked pretty. Yeah. It was really pretty. It had a big crystal chandelier. It was, it was like, the dining room. it was the dining room, yeah. And everyone had some kind of opinion to tell me about it when they came over. Let me tell you. And then what, like, Four years later, it was in all the magazines. <laughs> Not really, but <laughs> they don't know me from a hole in the wall. Huh? It was trending. It was trending then, yeah. Okay, so those caps are in. I guess we could take you overhead. Now I have to punch these two holes, and then we're finished. There's that one. There's 
that one. I think I am going to take this sweater off for a second. All right. Punch that through to the back. I put my caps on this side. It really doesn't matter which way you go, caps on whatever side you want, but just remember, I like to do it this way because if I have to take them out, it does matter. At least it's easier. Remember our tutorial, Ramel? Okay, let's set these bad boys. Okay. All right. So I'm. I kind of just set that in the cradle and I rock it to make sure it's steady and then press down. I'm not pressing that hard, but I do like to, I guess, put my body into it a bit like this, even though I probably don't need to. It makes me feel like I'm doing a better job. <laughs> okay, I move the bottom layer out of the way and I I'm gonna work that rivet. Now it's in the cradle. There it is. Yep, feels good. And then set this one in the cradle. Make sure that bottom layer is out of the way. There it is. And now the bag is ready to rock can be loaded down with my radicchio and you know all the the beans the cans of soup the everything this bag will hold it and it stands up in the self checkout lane you know how they want us to all do our own checkout now this sits in that little kiosk open wide and everything see what i mean i don't even put in the inside pockets anymore with this pattern because you don't need it, if you're using it for a grocery tote anyway. All right, I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. If you have any questions, please leave me a comment. Let me know how you did. And if you need further help, remember you can reach us at help at sohungryhippie.com. All right, peace, love, sewing. I'll see you soon.